You might want to cover your ears. Where'd the rocks come from? Reed Richards, a young man in 2007, gives a presentation to his class, declaring his desire to be the first person to teleport across realities. His peers scorn him, and his instructor, Mr. Kenny, mocks his objective. However, Ben Grimm is intrigued by Reed's comments. Later that night, Reed infiltrates Ben's family's junkyard and convinces him to help bring a gadget into his basement. Reed obtains a toy automobile and tries to convince Ben that teleportation is real. He activates his contraption, causing it to destroy every transformer in the area. Nevertheless, he successfully teleports the automobile, leaving behind a mound of rocks where the car previously stood. Reed becomes convinced that Ben is crazy. Seven years later, Reed and Ben have become best friends and are participating in a scientific fair to showcase their invention. Reed successfully teleports a child's model plane, but unfortunately, the energy surge damages a basketball net, leading to his disqualification. At this moment, Dr. Franklin Storm and his adoptive daughter, Sue, approach Reed and Ben. Impressed by Reed's innovation, Franklin extends an invitation for Reed to join him in a project at the Baxter Foundation. As a farewell gift, Ben gives Reed his old pocket knife. Franklin presents his ideas to a board of experts, with Dr. Harvey Allen leading the group, who is skeptical about involving young scientists in the initiative. Franklin proposes utilizing interdimensional travel to acquire new resources for Earth's benefit. Afterwards, Franklin visits Victor Von Doom, the originator of the initiative. Although Victor initially rejects Franklin's proposal, Franklin tracks him down in a shanty and persuades him to join forces again. Victor reluctantly agrees, motivated primarily by his feelings for Sue. Meanwhile, Franklin's son Johnny participates in a street race. Initially, he experiences a stall but swiftly recovers and accelerates. However, his car's engine eventually overheats and burns out. Franklin finds Johnny at the hospital, where he is being treated for an injured arm. Franklin expresses his disappointment in Johnny, reprimanding him for wasting his talent. However, Johnny harbors resentment towards his father for prioritizing his own career over their family. Johnny instantly becomes friends with Reed upon joining the squad. Victor, on the other hand, exhibits a cold and snobbish demeanor towards them. However, the entire crew collaborates to construct a larger teleportation machine based on Reed's plans, known as the Quantum Gate. Once the machine is completed, the crew sends a small chimp into the alternate dimension referred to as Planet Zero. They establish video monitoring of the planet and successfully bring back the chimp unharmed. Despite Franklin's efforts to convince Alan that the team is prepared, Alan notifies them that he and the other board members will recruit NASA members as the initial human subjects to journey to Planet Zero. Reed and Johnny raise a toast to Victor with their drinks as they process the news. Despite the circumstances, they resolve to proceed with teleporting themselves. Reed reaches out to Ben and urges him to join them on this adventure. The four men prepare themselves in transit to Planet Zero. Sue receives an alert that the quantum gate has been activated and promptly calls Franklin to the laboratory. Meanwhile, the boys stumble upon dirt and a peculiar green substance on Planet Zero, which exhibits a reaction to organic matter. The material starts deteriorating and eventually culminates in an explosion. Understanding that the area is highly unstable, the boys hastily escape through the quantum gate. They make their way back up the slope, but unfortunately, Victor is struck by a significant amount of the substance and plunges into it. The remaining three individuals make their way back to Sue, but upon their return, they discover that Ben's pod is filled with pebbles instead of him. Furthermore, Johnny is struck by a massive fireball, leaving him unconscious and engulfed in flames. As they are transported back, 
a surge of radiation accompanies them, impacting Sue and causing her to become partially invisible. Reed regains consciousness and cautiously approaches Ben, who is trapped under a pile of rocks and calling for help. However, Reed becomes aware of his own leg elongating to an abnormal length and subsequently faints. Reed regains consciousness to find himself restrained to a bed with his limbs spread apart. Despite repeatedly calling for Ben, none of the physicians acknowledge his pleas. When the medical staff leaves the room, he manages to free himself from the straps and makes his way through the air vents, all while Ben continues calling out for him. As Reed navigates through the vents, he stumbles upon Ben, who has undergone a transformation, turning into a colossal rock creature. Ben implores Reed for help, but Reed senses approaching footsteps. Fearing discovery, he escapes, promising Ben that he will return to assist him. Reed flees from the confines of the Area 57 facility and into the untamed wilderness. A year has elapsed, and during this time, Alan has harnessed Ben's immense stature and strength, employing him as a formidable weapon in battles. On the battlefield, Ben, now known as the Thing, is witnessed demolishing tanks with his sheer power. Meanwhile, Johnny, who has fully mastered his fire manipulation and flying capabilities, is now the Human Torch. Sue has also honed her skills, becoming the Invisible Girl, adept at both invisibility and force field manipulation. Each of them has been equipped with specialized outfits tailored to their newfound abilities. However, Reed's whereabouts remain unknown, and the search for him continues. Sue diligently follows the trail of recent sightings, tracking him through his emails. By tracing his correspondence, she comes across the username cptn underscore n3mo, a reference to their earlier conversation about 20,000 leagues under the sea. Reed finds himself in Panama, where he resorts to altering his facial features to conceal his identity. However, he becomes aware of a breach at the airfield and is confronted by a group of mercenaries. Utilizing his stretching abilities, Reed manages to evade their attacks and makes an escape. However, Ben catches up to him. Overwhelmed by feelings of betrayal due to Reed leaving him behind, Ben receives a headbutt from Reed, resulting in his capture. Reed is subsequently transported to Area 57, where Alan reveals his intentions to restart the Quantum Gate in order to seek a cure from Planet Zero. Reluctantly, Reed agrees to assist his former companions, albeit begrudgingly. Reed eventually reunites with the other three team members, and a crew of explorers ventures back into Planet Zero. During their exploration, they spot a figure in the distance, who turns out to be Victor. Upon bringing him back, they discover that his entire body has become encased in metal, a result of his suit merging with him and the green material from Planet Zero. Victor regains consciousness and reveals that he has grown stronger during his time on the planet. He declares his intent to destroy Earth and reshape Planet Zero according to his own vision. Demonstrating his newfound powers, Victor begins manipulating objects in the room, causing the deaths of two physicians, and ultimately explodes Alan's skull. Victor escapes and continues to blow up heads before returning to the Quantum Gate. Victor fries Franklin when he attempts to stop him. Before dying, Franklin instructs Sue and Johnny to take care of each other. Reed, Sue, Johnny, and Ben chase him down and pursue him through the gate. Everyone has returned to Planet Zero. Victor has created a black hole with the intention of engulfing and annihilating Earth. The four of them realize that in order to close the gateway, they must eliminate Victor. Victor begins manipulating the environment to trap the four of them. Reed informs the group that while Victor may be stronger than each of them individually, they have a chance when they combine their strength. Sue creates a temporary force field around the portal while Reed engages in a diversionary tactic against Victor. It's clobberin' time. Ben exclaims as he punches Victor, sending him hurtling towards the black hole where he is absorbed and destroyed. Johnny then closes the portal while flying, and Sue uses her powers to transport herself, Reed, and Ben back to Earth. 
While the military initially hesitates to continue collaborating with the four, they express gratitude for their efforts in saving the planet and agree to provide them with a private base of operations. Reed realizes that the team needs a name. Ben appreciates the location and exclaims how amazing it is. In that moment, Reed instantly grasps what to call the team. The Fantastic Four.